You better plan, you better save, you better invest, and you better preserve your savings for retirement because you're going to need it. People realize we have a serious problem. What they're saying is, what do we do? What's the way forward? Uh, and so we try to not just help them understand the need for action, but provide a framework for potentially moving forward. Fiscal, energy, environmental, immigration, Iraq, health care, just to name a few, serious sustainability challenges. Our present course is not sustainable in these areas. And some of these challenges are interrelated. Health care is the largest driver of the long-range fiscal imbalance. We've got to get started because the miracle of compounding is working against us. We've got to educate the public. We need to make, recognize that the three most powerful words in the Constitution have to come alive. We the people. We are responsible and accountable for what does and does not happen in Washington. If people care about the future of our country, our children, and our grandchildren, then they will end up becoming informed and involved about this in order to make sure that we can start making tough choices. I think it's becoming clearer and clearer with each passing year uh, that these challenges are real, that these programs are, are headed over a fiscal cliff, and, and the more Americans become aware of that, uh, the more they're, they're, they're going to expect politicians to be honest about these issues. Uh, so I, I haven't given up because I think in the, bo in the bottom, at the bottom line, uh, in the final analysis, democracy does work. Uh, and so we, we just need to continue to illuminate these challenges, make people aware that they're real and that, and that they're not too far down uh, the line. Uh, and, uh, and the more be people become aware of this, the more they will then begin to factor that in to the kind of leaders they choose. So uh, I think there is a light at the end of the tunnel, and it all starts with public education. And if young people do not get engaged and involved, we're in trouble. Uh, and this is all about young people's future. This is all about young people's checkbooks, young people's paychecks, uh, young people's tax burdens. Unfortunately, many young people aren't as engaged and involved in this issue as they should be. That's a mistake because they're going to pay the price and they're going to bear the burden if others fail to act. So one of the things that we actively try to do is to hold our town hall meetings on college and university campuses in order to increase the involvement of young people. Fortunately, it's starting to pay off, but we've got a long way to go. Well, it's, it's sort of depressing at the outset to think about how many obstacles we have to overcome, but it's optimistic to think that um, young people especially are engaged in asking these questions and looking into the answers. The way he presented it was a way to kind of break down that political divisiveness and come together to work on real solutions, because we have to. I don't think our generation is really paying enough attention to it, especially. From a political standpoint, I think it's important to really contact your congressional representatives and start enforcing change a little bit, because as he said, you have to force them to confront the issue. What surprised me was the amount of debt that we have. I think that people hear numbers and it just goes in one ear and out the other. and. Having that number in your head of $50 trillion really brings it home that this is something that we need to take care of and it's not just going to go away, you know, it's not something small. This is about the last possible time we're going to have to change things. So let's do it. Let's get some people in office with some courageous leadership and let's, uh, let's make our world better for our children and, and for ourselves in the future by, by dealing with this now. What we have to do is impress on our leaders that this, the policies that we adopt have to have a longer range view than the, the next election cycle. And, and that's a key message and the more citizens understand a longer range view of policy rather than sort of a fee for service, I pay taxes to the government and I get this in response, I think you have to have an attitude shift in those two things or we're not going to make any progress. I feel like it's fired me up. You know, a lot of young people are disillusioned with the system, and especially people my age, I think they, they believe that they can't take action, that they can't find a solution. And just even being able to talk to an expert in the field inspires us that this is a problem that is crucial to the well-being of our nation, and we need to start doing something now. The next generation is going to pay the price, uh, but they've got to get mobilized now. Uh, in order to uh, reward politicians that speak about these issues now and help us resolve these issues now uh, because, uh, because the alternative is just a heavy, heavy burden, either taxes or, or government debt uh, that, will, that will sit on the shoulders of the next generation of workers. 
We the people are responsible and accountable for what does or does not happen. I don't care if you're a Republican, a Democrat, a liberal, a conservative, or an independent, because we all have something major at stake here. Look, we've talked about a lot of big numbers. $50 trillion is a huge number. I mean, most people can hardly relate to a billion, much less tens of trillions of dollars. But really, it's not just about numbers. I can give you a lot of numbers. They're, they're all big and they're all bad. It's about values, and I'll give you a value. Stewardship. As a leader, no matter what your responsibilities are, your job is to not just generate positive results today, not just leave things better off when you leave than when you came, but leave things better positioned for the future. That's a much heavier lift. And the baby boom generation, my generation, is the first in the history of our country that's on track not to meet that stewardship commitment. And I do not believe that that's acceptable, and so I'm going to do everything I can to change it. What is going on is immoral. We are mortgaging the future of our kids and grandkids, and in many cases, people are going to leave them with a tab rather than an inheritance. That is wrong. In America, a person with a solid education, a positive attitude, a strong work ethic, and solid moral and ethical values has unlimited potential. All along, my interest in the Social Security issue and in, in taking to a larger scale these other budget issues stems from being a parent of four children and, and now a grandchild and, and, and wondering what kind of a legacy are we leaving them. Uh, and, and I really don't think we've done the best for the next generation. Um, and um, I, I want them to look back at my generation and say that uh, we made some tough decisions uh, to get the, the, uh, the federal budget and these particular entitlement programs on a sound financial footing and that we did it in a way that was fair, yes, of course, to the current retirees, but more importantly, to future generations of retirees. The second thing it's about, in addition to values, is people. And here's what it is for me. These are the Walker grandchildren, Christy, Grace, and Daniel, five, four, and one, respectively. They didn't cause this problem, but this is their problem. They will pay the price. They will bear the burden if others fail to act. They are obviously too young to vote. They don't have a voice. I am their voice, and I will not stop until people start taking this seriously and start doing something about it. Thank you very much. One must study history in order to learn from it and not repeat the mistakes of the past. Some people think the United States is the longest standing republic. That's not true. Rome lasted a little over 500 years. Why did it fall? Number one, decline in moral values and political civility at home. Number two, overconfident and overextended militarily around the world. Number three, fiscal irresponsibility by the central government. We can solve these problems. Your Child's Inheritance, Debt, is a co-production of For Our Grandchildren, a social security education program, and TPT's Minnesota Channel, with additional funding provided by Skyline, a national designer and builder of trade show exhibits.